Hi there, my name's Liz Saunders. I'm a member of the faculty for the NHS Leadership Academy and have spent my career working in and around health um, with leaders of all levels. Hi there, I'm Simon Bird. I'm also a member of the Leadership Academy faculty. Uh, very similarly to Liz, I've worked in every corner of the NHS, working with very senior leaders to people at earlier stages uh, in their career. And I also work with organisations outside the health service as well. So Simon and I are going to be building together a series of conversations about different topics that we hope will be of interest to you. Our aim through these conversations is to get under the skin of what they're about and to think about, well, what have we seen work in different areas of the health service or indeed different uh, sectors and industries and what might be helpful to you going forwards? Uh, so the first of these conversations, kind of overheard conversations, if you like, is uh, we thought we'd talk about the R word, uh, resilience. Why are we talking about resilience? Well, because everybody else is talking about resilience. So we felt it was kind of something we should have a view about. And it turns out we have we have quite a lot of views about it. Um, one of the things we notice quite quickly is resilience is quite a tricky term to get hold of. Um, it's kind of like a, what you call a meta idea. It has lots of ideas within it. Um, and that's a little bit tricky in terms of who's using it, where are they using it, and in what context are they using it? I mean, I think it's a bit slippery, uh, Liz. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that, you know, I've, I've worked on sessions with groups a lot about resilience and you know, one of the definitions that you get straight away is oh, it's, it's bounce back ability, it's about being able to go back to how you were before. And I think to a degree that can be helpful. Um, and I think it's, it's a very situational thing. So it might be that if you're going through something that you know to be temporary, I don't know, a sports injury, for example, that you can think, okay, well, I want to kind of get healed and get back to where I was before. So that, and that would show resilience. I'd be able to um, keep my motivation in play whilst I'm dealing with that injury. But I think there's some real limitations around this sense of, of bounce back ability, particularly if you're in a situation where, well, where we are now, you know, you start thinking about back, bounce back ability in a global pandemic. Is it, is it realistic? And in fact, desirable to expect people to be able to return to where they were March 2020 and I would say probably no <laughs> it's the answer to both those questions what do you think yeah I think I I do I, I mean I, I I agree with that about bounce back ability to me I think in some ways that in some places that I'm noticing it's being used implies that we as people are like elastic bands and you will stretch it and let go of it and it bounces back um except I think if you looked under a microscope that elastic band isn't quite the same when it bounces back as it was before and I you made me think of that when you talked about the sports injury actually Liz and let's say you've got uh, I know, a horrible knee cruciate ligament like it's, it's Olympic year um, and people are injured and then they come back but in that injury there is some scar tissue probably and maybe it's just slightly weaknesses and so the idea of bounce back ability I think sometimes it's being used and negates the idea that actually people will still be a little bit different mm. and changed as a result of that experience. So I think that's one of the nuances about being more sophisticated about how we think about this. And it's not just about bouncing back to how things were before. Yeah, I mean, there's a definition that I saw um, from Rafi Park recently that has helped me reframe some of this, which is about um, Resilience is the ability to be vulnerable and show some vulnerability and grow through periods of adversity. And that got me interested, the vulnerability piece particularly, because there is a sense sometimes in organisations that there is this sort of, well, you need to be resilient. It's almost like you need to put your hard hat on and just kind of take it. That, that's what resilience means. And I think well there's a very different way of approaching this that's saying look people are going through a difficult time and i guess this is a unique experience in that pretty much the whole world is going through a difficult time simultaneously to to a greater or lesser degree and therefore i think there's a real question in how do we connect with that trauma frankly at the moment all those difficulties and how do we help other people connect with those in a way that becomes then helpful to help their growth I mean, you were saying to me um, just earlier on about um, 
actually we you know we, we, the event life events that shape us are often not the really enjoyable ones do you want to talk a bit more about that because i think that yeah there's, this. there's something about um it comes from the world of, of positive psychology actually but it recognizes actually out of negative events can come positive development and it's this idea that actually if we look back if you look back in your life and when at the time very uncomfortable things were happening to you or they may have felt uncomfortable or difficult or challenging in hindsight and it's always with these glorious rose-colored spectacles we can look back and we can recognize actually because that happened to me I now have maybe a slightly different view of the world or I have met some other people or I have learned something new about myself yeah and so that's interesting isn't it because if you pull that thread that would suggest actually we don't need always to shield people and hide people right. away from every negative event because actually if we can support people through negative events there can be growth and positive things at the end of it and I think that's another it's another interesting element in this debate about resilience do we hide and protect people and let them build a big shell about themselves or just do we do we try to equip people as much as we can to help them come out of this in, in one piece yeah I, I yeah I think that's really interesting and thinking about how this situation has evolved over the past year and I think that at the start well it took a lot of people by surprise and that and I think there was a there was an energy about it and the NHS is loves and is very good in a crisis so there was a bit of a kind of right everyone just rally and crack on and there's you know orthopedic surgeons probing patients and you know it, everyone, everyone kind of you know one NHS and all that and people are clapping and there's a lot vested in this and so you could get away with actually we just need to kind of knuckle down heads down let's get through it a sort of siege mentality and I think as it get, as it has gone on and as it continues to go on you can't expect that to be enough now and I think that some sometimes teams that operated like that it enabled that energy papered over some cracks that were there anyway about mm. interpersonal differences or that kind of thing and that where we're getting to now is the teams that I see that are that are being successful now are the ones that are having the open conversations with one another the ones that are debriefing effectively after a clinical shift the ones that are looking after one another so it is it is kind of exposing that vulnerability and I'm seeing teams grow through it best case scenario um the ones that are kind of able to face it i guess and work with it rather than deny that that's there yeah, yeah. what 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 do you think is helpful in terms of people building resilience can you build resilience oh that's that's an interesting one i mean my personal view is um it kind of depends which um depends what you believe about resilience in a way so very briefly some people see resilience as a trait so something you've got you either got it or you haven't yeah be more resilient increase your resilience so it's like something within you that you you just just be more turn it on okay turn it on and be tougher and be stronger and then there's the um alternative view so not trait theory but it's a state okay and what i like about it think about resilience as a, a state is it is it talks about resilience as being flexible and it's about people being adaptable and responding to situations so the state around them okay? Okay. and I really think that can be um, developed so um, bear with me I'll go run through a very very practical little tool okay, okay. so it's a four-step tool or four four elements and this is something you can either um, try with yourself or if you are leading other people um, this is something perhaps you can think about how you can work with your people around Okay. okay so it's called atam a-t-a-m so a is for attention where do you spend where do you focus your attention through the day are you spending your time thinking about um johnny and maxine in the corner behaving like however they're behaving or do you spend time focused on things that you are in control of Ooh, interesting interesting i do notice at the moment the way things are that um I like a rule and I am uh, drawn to well you can't help it but to be drawn to it can you because the way that the press coverage is of like looking at the you know the rule breakers the Brighton Beach being busy or whatever and it and it does um I notice how that impacts my mood if I think well there's loads of people out there breaking rules and what's the point in all of this yeah. that kind of thing 
Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that. I can come out of the supermarket in a very different emotional state than when I went in mm. because I've been exercised by whether people are wearing masks or not. Yeah, yeah. So look, look where I spent my focus, my attention, and I can notice how it feels different. There's more adrenaline in my system, or there's more cortisol, or whatever it is. <laughs> um, so that's interesting, isn't it? How powerful that can be. And so I really like your example about um, and like uh, after action review or after shift review. How did it go? Because the team is looking at what actually happened. Yeah. So yeah. that's um, attention. Attention. Um, the T is for thoughts. What thoughts do we have about things that we see or don't see? Okay. So this is around our beliefs. What it's about our beliefs um, and stories that we tell ourselves. So let's say. Um, Let's say maybe a regular email doesn't come. It normally comes on Monday morning from the chief executive's office. It hasn't come. Or oh, so you could think the chief executive, I mean, they're on their knees. They're hiding things from us. The trust is clearly in some kind of code black. Um, terrible things are about to happen. Or you could think, oh, that email hasn't come. I wonder why that hasn't come. Um, uh, maybe they're really busy. Maybe it'll come this afternoon. Okay. Yeah, I see. Can you see? You might feel different. Yeah. Yeah. at the end of those um the motivational piece so the uh, m is motivation this is really about trying to reconnect people with why why you why they come to work okay it's really terrible really hard around here at the moment isn't it and uh to remind ourselves about this kind of one team what we're trying to do in orthopedics or in itu um that can only take 30 seconds as a team leader okay you don't need to spend long or do that with each other um and a action what actually are you going to do what do you have agency to do? Will you do anything or will you just sit there and commentate on everybody else? So it's a really simple model. You can teach yourself, you can try and work with yourself. Um, and But I think for other people leading teams, I think it's a really helpful little framework to work with. And what I like about it is it gets away from the abstract ideas into quite practical things. Yeah, I think that is helpful to think of what is it that you can do. It reminds me, the motivation piece reminds me of a, um, a Japanese practice of ika, ikigai, which is about which is all about purpose. So it's about mm -hmm. they looked at, they looked at longevity and found this community of Japanese women who were living longer than anybody else in the world and got curious about what that's about and found that actually it's about um, these women sort of really understand what they're living for and feel connected to you know, and therefore motivated. <laughs> to use your M word, um, to carry on living. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but I, that gets me interested in where do we find our purpose through this? Um, and as a team leader, how do you help your team to identify what their purpose is in this context? Particularly if you're working in a service that's been redeployed or has had significant change because of um, the pandemic response. And indeed moving forwards, you know, going back to your point about the future uh, doesn't need to be the same as the past and we can grow through this. So what's our new and invigorated purpose, knowing what we know now about how we can deliver services, for example? Yeah, 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 I really like that. And it also takes me to, I think, uh, uh, an area of thought, which I know we're going to talk about in another conversation, overheard conversation, around what's the job of leaders at the moment? What's the, especially if half the team you're leading are remote, Maybe yeah. you are going to have to do something for them to help them connect to purpose, etc. But that's somewhere else. I think we're out of time on resilience, though, aren't we? Yeah, I think on, on that tempting hook for another conversation. <laughs> um, we hope to see you next time. Thanks very much.